All right, Shalom. Start first by giving all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Arakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect. Shalom unto you. Um, This video I'm going to entitle, um, This Was Not Meant to Be Easy. Okay? And what I'm referring to is this walk in this truth. All right? The walk, your walk in this truth is not meant to be easy. All right? Meaning it's not everything's not supposed to line up at your feet. Your, your, your steps aren't supposed to be sure up under you as you're coming out of the confused state of Babylon and you're in captivity. You're not supposed to be living... The, the 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 wonderful your, your best life <laughs> or you you know this wonderful life that's that's not what this life is about but transitioning out of this when when a, when a society and like this pushes so much comfort upon the people and the desire to have comforts even to those captives that a lot of times we we lose sight on on what's real and and, and where we really stand in in in, in real truth and what I mean by that, you know, Jacob uh, live uh, have a nice car, and have uh, live in an apartment, you know, have food on the table every night, and and feel like he made it, you know, have a, a, a okay job, able to pay his bills, and feel like he made it. Okay, that's not what this life or this society is about for you Israelites, you so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans. Okay, because. You can't just quit your job and, and, and you know and, and go off to uh to you know to, to go sail the seven seas for an adventure. It's, <laughs> that's not happening, okay? That's not meant to happen for you. Not in this time. Okay? Now the kingdom of heaven we're talking about something different at that point. But for the most part, our job is to uh to push this word to for you, uh, to work up your left for y'all about some y'all shot. All right, that's that's the point of what we're meant to do on this side in hopes that we earn our salvation. Okay, so and with that being um, part of our job, it makes it that much harder for us to succeed and to be accepted of this world, which brings on those comforts. All right, so I, I mean, this is nothing new as far as a, um, a a different message. It's just the truth. Of what this? Let me see where that's said. No, that's in the first chapter, the second chapter. One second, bear with me. One second. All right, so I'm gonna. Go ahead and read this in Baruch, third chapter, um, seventh verse. It says, And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in, in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name. What name is that? The name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Bahashim is uh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Okay? We'll put our hope and praise in that name. Okay? And we're going to call upon that name. That's the name. It's not Jesus Christ. It's, it's, that's not even Eng that's not even Hebrew. That's not even English. That's like Greek. Okay. Anyway, it says, um, and praise thee in our captivity. We got to praise the Lord in our captivity. Okay. And how do you praise him? You push his wisdom out. You call upon his name. You pray in his name. You thank him. You ask for forgiveness. Okay, it says, For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before us. And we are our forefathers, okay? Don't forget that. We are our forefathers that made mistakes, that, that went astray from the Heavenly Father. And this is our opportunity to get it right, all right, to make it right. We're not going to get it right, but to make it right. How do we make it right? With a sincere heart toward Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. But it comes at a price, man. you got to get jacked up along the way. This is not meant to be easy. Okay? If this were easy, everybody would do it. Okay? It's not meant to be easy. Brothers wouldn't fall out or, 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 
or you know, I guess you can't call them brothers, but but, but the two thirds wouldn't fall out. You know, people that come into this truth, they'd all be in it. Everybody be was meant to to try your spirit and your sincerity toward your Hawabashi Miao All right, it says, um, behold. We are yet this day in our captivity. Even today, we're still in captivity. Even though you say, I'm an American, and it's the home of the brave and free, and uh, we're not free. You so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, and, and, and generally the American public, you're not free. The Rothschilds are free. Do they have, do they have um, money worries? Do they have ID cards? I'm talking about like a driver's license. They don't have all that. They don't need all of that. Do they have to think about it before they, they hop on a plane and go somewhere? No. They are truly free. Okay? You are not free. Okay? You are not free. If you have a job, you are not free. If you if you want to live indoors, you are not free. Okay? You can't go wherever you want and do whatever you want in this society. You so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. Well, I'm going to go up to the mountains and live off the land. They're going to search your ass out. The mountain. They're going to send Rambo up there to come get you off that mountain. If you won't go willingly, they'll just kill you. That's just what it is. So, you're not free. It says, um, where thou hast scattered us. Yeah, all over the world where the Israelites are scattered, you're not free. No matter if you're in America, South America, Europe. In the king's palace, wherever you're at, you can be living under a, 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 a sultan or whoever. You can be up under a, a prince or whoever, and you know, be right there with money and all of this. You're still a captive slave, and you're still in captivity. Okay, you are not free even then with millions of dollars. You can ask the, the person um, that has money, the Jake that has money, all these famous people in the world. They are still. Still gotta talk about the athletes. They gotta work out. The 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 big musicians, they hit song. They whatever the case may be, you're still subject to everything. We watching Drake at these NBA finals. You know, I watch the games. He's at these NBA finals. Like he ain't got shit to do. He got stuff to do. Things that keep him locked into this. He can't just check out and go disappear off the face of the earth and be all right. It's not gonna. It's not happening like that. He's subject to payments still. Okay, he is still yet this day in captivity. There's no escaping it. Now, that may be just how he chooses to, to do his inter entertain himself. All right. Anyway, it says, um, uh, for, a for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. You got to make payments. You got to answer to somebody. You got to put work in for the next person. Okay, to benefit off of. So according to all the iniquities of the forf of our forefathers, excuse me, of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. And when our forefathers departed from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh guess what happened? That tradition of going away from the Heavenly Father continued on and on and on, passed all the way down to here we are in 2019. And we've never been further away from the Heavenly Father ever in life. Okay, you look at the disparity of, of the two thirds and how far they've fallen away from Yahweh Bashim Shah. Us of the hopeful elect that's calling upon him, that's trying to give our, our diligence and truth to him, we're still not as close as we need to be. But guess what? We're trying. And that sincerity is the difference, okay? So I just wanted to kind of start off with that. Let me go to what I, what I had in mind. Okay, so bring me back to uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 2, to verse 1. We've all heard it. And if you haven't, this is something that your preachers and your, your pastors will never teach you. They don't know about this. And if they do, how come they're not breaking down the full word to you? Anyway, um, chapter 2, verse 1 says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. If you're not... Uh, come to come in to serve the Lord. Things things may seem nice and easy. You're still gonna be subject to payments. You're still gonna have troubles in the earth. You're still in captivity, and all of that. But you may not believe that you have the same temptations. Why? Because you're wholly given to them. 
only when you know where the boundaries at, which does the statute laws and commandments tell you where those boundaries are at. Okay. When you know where those boundaries are at, are you, are you able to, to see how hard you're being tempted? How, how hold your, how hard your soul is being tried. Okay. It says set thy heart right. Get your mind right about this and constantly endure. Why do you have to constantly endure? The word endure as, as, as apostle Gabar always brings out. You know, the other apostle he says it, it's, it's the word breaks down to um to make hard. You have to harden yourself to being able to to take these punches, man. To take these hits, okay. Life is gonna throw hits at you, man. They're gonna swing at you. They're gonna try to throw haymakers. You gotta know when to take one on the chin. You gotta know when to take one to the to the head, and when to dodge, duck, and you know, and protect yourself. How do you protect yourself? You protect yourself in the spirit of your high I'm get touched. No, you're going to get hit. Okay? The elect do get sick. The elect do have money problems. It's, it's not like the, 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 the Christian church that's just, come get this money anointing and you just you just run, run around free and, you know, and all God answers all your prayers like that. No. That's a bold place lie that, 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 that the church is, is teaching. Okay? We still got to deal with the regular life situations. Okay? But the Different should be black and white to you now. Easy. Easy to endure. You need to make yourself hard toward those things, okay? It says, um, constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. And don't always try to rush and get out of situations, okay? Okay? Sometimes it's like it's like if you ate something bad and say you got food poisoning, right? You can't rush that situation off of you. You just have to go through it. Till it's complete okay that's just how it goes that's just what it is you can take modium and, and, and pepto-bismol all of that you just got to get it out your body and once your body natural mechanism has, has got that all up out of you it'll begin to repair and heal itself as it should okay but your mind has to be right to be able to go through and endure okay and then for me, I, I start to think on what can I do to make it better so I don't have to go through that again. Learning from my mistakes, okay? Anyway, it says, cleave unto him and depart not away. Don't give up on the Heavenly Father. Classic is uh, Job, okay? That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And wasn't Job increased at his last end? He lost everybody and everything, even his own health. And he still bounced back and stayed true to Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. Okay? He would not depart away from Yahweh. Okay. It says, um, he take cheerfully. So when bad shit happened to you, take cheerfully. Why? Let me go. Um, uh, let me see if I should go there. Um, yes, I must go there. I believe it's the book of James. Or is it Peter? I believe it's James. Bear with me. I mean, these are pretty much straightforward uh, scriptures, man. It's First Peter chapter four, and I'm gonna start up at twelve. But the point I really want to hit was um was fourteen. But it says, uh, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Don't think this is something uh, strange that's happening unto you. This is meant to happen to you when you come into this faith, okay? When you believe in this, all right? It says, um." Which is to try you, which is to to, 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 to test to see if you are, are precious metal, you know, if, if your spirit is precious and true to you, how about you, Yahweh Shai, okay, to the Most High God and the Messiah, all right, the anointed. It says, uh, as though some strange thing happened unto you, get your mind right, set your heart right, that stuff is going, bad things are going to happen to you. It's not meant to be easy, okay? It's not meant to be easy. When bad things happen to you, it's so that you get your mind right and you understand, like, look, I don't care what what can what was it King David that said, who can separate me from the love of the most high? Okay? Nothing. It's the answer. Nothing. Because within the most high uh, consists all things. And all knowledge and wisdom. Okay? All the things that'll get you out of these troubles, all the reasons why you're in these troubles, okay.
So just like Job, all right, that you that you've made it through the test. Now that you're pure, when the day comes that Yahweh uh, returns to the earth to set things right in righteousness, you'll be you know who will be able to stand in that day. Okay, when you go through these trials, you'll be able to stand when you have your mind right about it. It says um. Uh, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoicing as much as ye are partakers of Yahweh Shai's sufferings, of our Lord's sufferings, just like he got beaten and spit on and and and, and, and shamed and everything else that happened to him. You're taking a small chunk of that, okay? When you when you when you when you come to serve the Lord, you take that on. A prophet is not without honor. Except in his own country, okay? So you have to understand that people around you is not gonna gonna love you. They're not gonna respect you. They're not gonna make things easy for you. Plus the demons that's on them is set against you. Okay, realm against realm. The demonic, if you're trying to be righteous and giving it your whole sincere effort, the the, the demons they they got their sincerity to keep you as a demon, to, to, to throw you off from righteousness. Okay? We're all Job's in a sense. All right? And Job wants to try our soul, try our spirit. Okay? But we have to stand strong just like Job did and don't fall. It says here um, um, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Why is that? Because we'll get glory as well. He's going he's gonna to share that glory, presuming the, the Romans, the 8th chapter. I we're, we're joint heirs in that glory, okay? And if you be reproached for the name of Yahweh, of Yahweh Shai, happy I resteth upon you. Okay, the spirit of the Most High and the spirit of glory resteth upon you. But it's hard. It's not easy. All right, it says, um, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. A lot of people speak bad about, about our Lord. And they, they, they talk bad about the little uh, off-brand Cesare Borgia, Jesus Christ image, and, and, and the characteristics that come with him. But upon the, those same characteristics of, of, the, of the actual biblical Lord, Yahweh Shai, the dark-skinned man, the so-called black man, as he will be called today, okay? White, uh, the, the, woolly, the woolly natural fro, you know? White-bearded and everything. All of that, he'd be evil spoken of, but on our part, he is glorified, man. So we, we, we would deserve glory, and we have to, to walk in that same image. And and as the most hated people upon the earth, nothing's worse to, to the world and society today but a Negro, a Latino, or a Native American trying to do righteous and that believes in a, in a dark-skinned Messiah, in a dark-skinned uh, Heavenly Father. Okay, that's like the worst evil ever on the planet in today's times. Okay, but you got to set your mind right and endure all of that. All right, let me go back now. Come back to Sirach 2. I'm on the third verse. It says, Cleave unto him and depart not away. It says, That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatever whatsoever is, is brought upon thee take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state because you're going to be changed to a lower state in the earth if you love your flesh and you love money and you love security all that's going out the window but if you understand these prophecies you'll know that that ain't coming anyway that nothing but bad's coming anyway that troops are gonna run in your house we thought the wolf out throw you in and FEMA trucks and trains and, and throw you into these concentration camps. With guns and everything else. Okay? Bust your head open. As well as the economy collapsing. Food is going to be, uh, you know, a scarcity. Okay? And you, and you got to deal with this. Okay? Lawlessness is going to be in the streets. Okay? All these things are coming, and you have to be able to, to have your mind right to endure all these things. All right? And that's what the man righteousness in your actions and thoughts and speech. Okay? It says, um, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. What's the furnace? It's a very hot 
place, okay? You have to be in that very, you're going to be put in that very hot place. And yes, subject to payments, captivity, the hard times that's coming, as well as the hate that this world will throw at you. Okay, this world doesn't want you to, to succeed. This world is, is angled around wickedness. This is hell on earth. Okay, for you Israelites, this is heaven to the damn devil that walks the earth. Okay, when I say that, I mean the incarnate spirit of the wicked that rule the world today. And we shouldn't have to talk about who that is, okay? We should already know that. If not, tune into another video, all right? But we have to go through all of this and cleave unto that. All right. It says, uh, no. Let me get another script. Come on, Job. Okay, I'm going to jump straight to the point. This is Job chapter 1. Um, start at verse 8. Yeah, let's get straight to the point. Say, and the Lord said unto Satan. Now, if you if you read up, you'll see that self along with the other angels. Um... It says, now there, was, verse six, now there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Okay? That spirit of Satan came within those sons of, of God with them. They were wicked Israelites even back then. Okay? But the point being that that spirit came to, 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 to tempt Job. It's not about the incarnate flesh, but that... that Satan's the adversarial, which the word Satan means adversary, that adversarial spirit came also. Okay? It says, um, back to verse 8. It says, uh, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High God, Yahweh, and issue with evil and pushes off evil? Okay? Have you considered him? You turning all these wicked Israelites out, but what about Job? Can you, can you get to Job? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, "Do Job fear the Most High for not? Does he fear you for nothing, or for not so?" Has uh, has thou, excuse me, has not thou made an hedge about him? Haven't you protected him? Right? Satan is like, hold on, hold on. I could do that, but you're the most high God. You're the, you're power over all of us. Haven't, haven't you put him in a special place? Protected and everything else? Put a certain spirit and mind on him? I can't, I can't fight against that. That's what this conversation is about. All right? And this is, that this conversation is leading to this trial. This, this, this trial by fire. Okay? This furnace of adversity that we have to go through. All right. So he done that on every side. He's blessed on every side because at the beginning of the chapter talked about his substance. Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. But I believe if you take that hedge from around, it's Satan talking to the most high. But I believe if you if you take that hedge from around him, he will curse you. Okay, this is the test. No matter how bad things get, you cannot turn upon away from your how about Shimia Shah. All right, it says, uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath that is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Okay, so he he took that power away, that hedge away from Job. And it said, but you can't touch him. So let me get to the next part. Okay, I'm going to jump down to the, uh, Job chapter 2, um, verse 3. It says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the Most High and issue with evil? It's funny because he, he mentioned the same thing again because he already knew that he was testing him by taking away his substance. You read that first chapter. Okay. He said, and he still, excuse me, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. So we must hold fast our integrity when, when, when we are changed to a lower state. And we, when we're going through this fire, uh, uh, fire and trial of adversity, through adversity. Okay. All right. It says, um, although thou 
movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Okay, this is part of the the uh, the, the example. Now, when you go to the of a man of the Lord, of a disciple, of an apostle. Okay, it says, um, and Satan answered the Lord and says, skin for skin, yet all that a man hath will he give for his life. Yeah, he'll give up everything to keep as long as he can keep his life. Okay, you'll give to not die. You'll give away everything to not die, because you can be blessed and get it back. You know, but life is the most precious thing to man upon earth, right? It says, um, but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. It said, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. You can do whatever you want. You took away all his substance. He, he held his integrity. Now you can go ahead and, and curse his flesh. But you cannot take his life. All right. And that's the trial by fire that we can go through. Satan can tempt us and beat us on every level. And it's not going to be easy. A lot of times our flesh is going to want to hear certain things, feel certain things, do certain things, be about certain things. And we got to deny ourselves. Okay. Occasionally we may get weak and get in, but we're getting down to the fourth quarter, man. This is the last few seconds in overtime now. All right. The game is on the line right now. All right. So we got to stay strong when it comes to this thing. Okay. Yep. And let me, let me, in fact, I'm going to keep reading. So, verse 7. So, when Satan, uh, uh, so when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord Yahweh and smote just health away as well. Okay? He also took his health away. All right? And if you read that whole story of Job, for some brothers, because some brothers got to deal with health issues. Financial situations, okay? Mental situations where you got demons plaguing your mind, you know? All types, of, and then a lot of men have all different levels, okay? All right? There's always stuff going on that you got to deal with, okay? When you're in this captivity, you can, you can choose to look at captivity like it's not a bad thing. Like, okay, I'm cool. But at the same time, there's going to be a level that the Most High will bring out of you. That will try you. Okay. And you got to endure it. All right. To, to, to make it to the end of this thing. All right. And, and if you know the story of Job. I suggest you read it. It's, it's pretty long. But very good. Because I mean it gets intricate. On how on how much integrity Job truly had. And how wicked and low. The people around him. His wife. So called friends and all that. Were to turn on Job. They begin to turn on Job. And this will happen unto you. You read in First Peter the fourth chapter. If I'd have read up in that in that in that in that book, you'd have seen how people are gonna look at you strange and, and act like something's wrong with you, because you don't run to the same evil like you used to when you came since you've come to, to serve the Lord, you know. But that that's the same. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just go there. We go into um, First John two go down there. Um, first John chapter two fifteen, it says, uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's a warning because those are the things like Job, uh, all his substance was taken away. Those are the same things that'll be taken from you. Are you going to hold strong, like Job held strong with your integrity? Okay. When, when the world, the love of the father is not in him. So of all your substance and the things and the, that you see y'all uh, going on in the world, if you're holding on to that, and you can't deal with losing that part, okay, you you're not fit to be of the you know a son of the heavenly Father. The love of the Father is not in you. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. And here's the other thing: the lust of the flesh and the love of your flesh. Those things right there is huge, because this is a um, Epicurean. Uh, world, okay, which Epicurean is, is, is 
is someone that desires to have pleasure. Okay, just whatever pleasure that is. Hence, LGBTQ, XYZ, so on and so forth. Okay, people live in that lifestyle because it's the love of their flesh, the lust of their flesh. Okay, they want they want to be in air conditioner. They want to be with massagers on their feet and and uh, and um and those um comfort soles in their shoes and you know all of these things come and and, and you, some people feel like they can't live without them. Well, the days coming where you're gonna have to live without all these little minuscule things that you hold so dear unto you. That's all part of the lust of the flesh. Okay. It says um. The lust of the eyes, things you see, and the pride of life. And the pride of you living on such a level. Oh, you worried about the next man. Uh, I have a nice car, and I got to have a nice place, and my girlfriend got to be a uh, supermodel, Instagram thought style, and, and all that is only going to destroy you, okay? All those things are only going to destroy you. It says, uh, it's, all those things is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes the way. OK, that type of world, society, all that's going to pass away. OK, the first major part of that passing away will be when martial law and. and OK, it's going to be real bad out there and all the wonderful things of life that you love are going to be gone. The comforts of walking into a store and eating whatever you like. You know, go and get you a hot meal at a fast food restaurant whenever you like. You're gonna be scarcely. You're gonna be. You're gonna be scarcely looking for beetles and different uh, bugs to eat off of. Okay, that's that's the level we're going to that you're gonna have to deal with. Okay, and there's a righteous way to deal with that. All right, it says uh. And the world passed away, and the lust thereof, the world and the lust thereof will pass away. Okay, those different lusts of the world. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. But if you do the will of the Most High, you abide forever. Job is back on the planet today. Okay? Being uh, as righteous as he was back in that time that we read about. Okay? Doing his very best to hold strong in Yahweh Bashir and he will succeed. Job is of the elect in this time. Do we know who he is today? I don't. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. The the the, the example is set. The, the things that are written before time written for our learning. This Job's the story of us building us up, but also taking the low and taking this change, uh, this low estate, and going through these fiery trials, and that it's not going to be easy. All of these things are to build us up for when we, we come into the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to just close out with one more script. Their, their, their head, foreheads hard against ours and we go out and teach and all that. But at the end of the day, no matter what has come upon you, you got to take it. Okay, you got to endure it. You got to deal with it. It says that uh, I'm going to quote this one and I'm going to grab the one in, uh, in, in second address. Um, the quote of the one is, um, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Mashiach. Okay. You got to endure hardness, man. Things are going to come at you hard. You got to endure whatever level it's on. You got to endure it for righteousness and sincerity's sake. Okay. I didn't really want to make this too long, but some, some of them, they got to be, they got to be like this. So I'm going to go all the way down to the end of this thing here. Yeah. Um, second address, chapter 16, 67. All right. I mean, King, when you read in the books, books of Psalms, the book of Psalms, the different Psalms that were written, King David really lays out some really good things in there, man, about, about building yourself up and, and how the most high can stay, you know, keep, keep his presence with him. This is Psalm 51. 91, you know, the different, there's plenty of scriptures, plenty of Psalms that, that will, will build your spirit up with your, with your prayers, man. Okay. Get into those. All right. I'm talking to myself first and foremost. Okay. Those things are necessary. Reading those things, the prayer of Manasseh, 
in the apocalypse. Those those different things, when you hear those and you read those, and you see the fear in the, the the song of the three holy children in the books of Daniel. Okay, uh, when you when you when you read those, you can see that it took that thought within those men to 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 prevail. It took all of that to prevail through the trials that they were going through. The song of the three holy children, they came out without a, 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 the smell of smoke within their garments. Okay, they were in the fiery furnace when they sung that song. What that song was a prayer. Okay. Anyway, it says, um, 2 Andrew 16, 67. Behold, the Most High himself is fear him. Leave off from your sins because... Those sins are taken by, by, by the wicked, by Satan, by the adversary, okay? It says, uh, and forget your iniquity, iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. And we can only do our best. We're not perfect yet. How shy was perfect. We just got to do the very best we can. And before this wedding starts, okay? It says, um, so, the, so shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Stay with him and he will deliver you from all trouble. I'm going to have to go back to Sirach. Okay, it says, um, for behold, matter of fact, go now. Sirach chapter 2, I think around 10. Mm hmm. I'm going to go back and read verse 6. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh will wait for his mercy. Wait. How do you wait? You gotta patiently wait, and patience means to uh, to uh, to suffer. Okay, you gotta suffer through the things that come upon you in the spirit of righteousness of your how Bashim Shai until it till the mercy comes, till he takes it off of you. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. No one said it was gonna be easy. It was meant to be difficult and hard for a reason. Nah, I can't. I can't. I can't cut this short. There's a couple of scriptures that still gotta come out. It says um. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Why? Because you'll do the things that are evident that you are supposed to do, and you will not fail. He will hold He will hold to you. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Hope for that. Expect it to come. Don't think you're going to get it immediately, because that's not what this trial by fire is about. You get the opposite now, that you can get that reward. And I'll just kind of have quote the story in 2nd Ezra's. Um, the seventh chapter, the analogy of, of going through the, the that fiery trial, going through that narrow that narrow pathway, okay, with with on the left and fiery on you know pits on the right, and of going through that path and the hardness that comes with it. Why should you get the glory of, of that land that was prepared for you that awaits you on the other side, okay? In analogy, the kingdom of heaven. But you have to go through this straight gate. Okay, I'm going to quote that one too. You have to go through this straight gate from Matthew 7 chapter. You have to go through this straight gate and all the afflictions that come with it. Okay, before you can get to that glorious uh, moment. That glorious uh, vast area the Most High is set before you. Okay. Anyway, verse 10, which is my point. It says, um, look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him we have too many examples of, of, of men doing the right thing and calling upon the Lord in their time of trouble and he provided for them okay time and time again the most high is faithful he, he that cometh to him must believe that he is Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. Okay, he must he must believe that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, from Hebrews the eleventh chapter. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins. We need that forgiveness. We get punished for it, but he doesn't necessarily uh, he doesn't kill us when we're trying to do the same thing. We're asking for forgiveness. Okay. We'll, we'll get punished a bit. We'll get chastised. Whom the Lord loveth, he chastised. Okay? All right? It says, um, For the Lord, Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, 
long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in a time of affliction. Now let's go back. All right. It says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, talking to the men of the Lord. Talking to all Israel, but particularly the men of the Lord. This this is a bad time coming, all right, for everybody. It says, um, And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. You're going to be in captivity, and they're going to give you certain things that, that you're going to have to endure and not and not take. Okay? You take that one little slither of bacon or whatever, that's going against the Heavenly Father. That was, you, you lost that temptation. That can cost you everything because you didn't have control over your flesh. You didn't have control over your senses. All right? And it's not easy. In a world that's, that's desensitized of righteousness and, 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 and wickedness is always in the forefront of everything and pushing you into paths of, of righteousness. There's a way out. There's always a way out. He's never going to tempt you above what you're able, but there's always a way out, all right? But there's so many avenues, the broad way, if you will, to, to, to follow uh, after wickedness. It says, um, um, yeah, verse 69 says, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. How do you consent unto them? Taking their, their mark of the beast, okay? Accepting uh, their, their system. All right. It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They're coming for the men of the Lord. We know that. We signed up for, for them to come for us, okay? And to test our faith on the highest level with our life. And that what, what Satan said to the Most High. Oh, every man will give up anything for his life. He said, you, Okay, you can, you can take his whole health and life away. But you can't kill him and see if he if he turn on me. Okay? We gotta deal with that. We gotta deal with that. And it's not gonna be easy. Okay? But if you if you're thinking from your flesh. And you understand that this ain't the life. This what it said, Matthew the tenth chapter. Fear not him that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill both body and soul in hell and in torments and in the grave and just just the worst, okay? The most high Yahweh does that. I'm not worried about what, what some 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 guy can do to me, some man walking on a plant that, that bleeds just like I bleed. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about what the most high, how he can make that put a spirit on that man to, to do something. How he can also put a spirit on that man. Or on me to get out of it. Okay. It says. um, They shall be like madmen spared. Now they're going to run through people. Okay. Even so the men of the Lord. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Most of our people don't fear the Lord. Two thirds don't fear Yahweh. Okay. But they're going to spoil those that fear him also. It says. For they shall. Waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried at gold in the fire. Yeah, that hard, that hard trial that we have to go through, that that furnace of adversity we have to go through. Okay. Uh, it says um oh, so here oh ye my beloved, said the Lord Yahweh, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. That hard time is coming for you. But he will deliver us from the same. If we stay true to him. Okay. Stay true. Don't, don't fall off. Do your very best that you can to earn it. To teach it. To push it. Okay. All the things that we're commanded to do. And it will not be easy. Quick testimony. My, my, my week has been hell. I've had literally a hell week. All the worst things that could happen have been happening. Okay? And it even seemed like, okay, damn, something else is happening this week. Let, let me try to get in the word. Okay, do this. And let me call a brother. Oh, too busy to call a brother. Not, and when I say too busy to call a brother, I mean like my hands are literally filled with things 
that I can't reach in my pocket and, and, and dial my brother. And then just me, I'm not the type to just for, for any any old reason to call brothers in the middle of the night, you know, just to disturb them. I know they're going through things and they need their time as well. But we can't be afraid to do that if it's necessary. If the spirit is on you and it's necessary, hey, hit a brother up, man, whoever that is. Okay? And if it's me, hit me. Lord willing, I'm up and I'll catch it and, and answer. Or it wakes me up and I'll answer. Okay? And we'll get and we'll get through it. And we bear each other's burdens. Hey, bearing each other's burdens is some sometimes a demon on brothers, man. That, that brothers don't want to be. Uh, uh, bothers him to the next brother, but that's the role that we have in this thing. Okay, we're not like Noah, where we're, we're out here alone. Okay, we have brothers to 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 help uh, help each other, man. And and that closeness between is part of the trial as well. Okay, part of the test of, that we got to go through as well, because you can't just think about yourself in this thing. All right. Anyway, it says, "Um, be ye not afraid, neither doubt." For the Most High is your God, okay, and a God to them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Yahweh, thy power. Let not your sins weigh you down, cause you gon' fuck up, but don't let it weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, and don't let your iniquity just keep stirring up and, and keeping you off the path, okay. It's not gonna be easy. It's not. It's not. It's going to be a very hard trial. It's only getting harder as time goes. You can see the spirit amping up. Any, it seems like when I first came to the truth years ago, um, it was a, it was, you know, you make mistakes and you didn't make a big deal. Okay, now it's getting to the point where things that we learned back when we, it don't work that way. Okay, it don't work that way. Now, those things that you should have mastered and removed out of your life, you still got to hold strong to those as well as new little shit that, that wasn't a big deal. Oh, here's a weird, weird example, but it's just an example. Um, you can't, you know, if you know that gelatin has pork in it or the possibility of, of pork being in, in gelatin, you, you can't guarantee that it's beef or kosher, vegetable, whatever. If you can't guarantee it, guess what? You can't do it. You can't do it. Okay, you can't eat that. All right, back in the day, it was you know brothers was strong on each other about it, on them, on ourselves about it. That has to remain till it becomes a standard. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, I'm I'm gonna end that right there. So let me go to the final scripture, which this is it. I'm gonna go to Matthew. I quoted it, but such a good one. <clears throat> that is uh, worth it to be read. Okay, Matthew uh, 7 and 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, the difficult gate. S T R A I T. Straight, the difficult. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's the way that everybody's going. The ways of the world are leading you broadly into destruction. Come on this way. This is the way that everybody... No, that's not the way. There's only one right path. The old paths. Ask for the old paths. Wherein is the good way. Okay? Pursuing the Jeremiah. All right? It says, um, For broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And the majority of the people go in that way. Okay? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it, okay? Because the Most High and His Spirit has to be on you to guide you into that, down that straight gate, okay? That you have as an example above you, okay? Start with the apostles on down, okay? So, understand... It's not going to be easy. No one said it was ever going to be easy. And what easy in the world that you've accomplished or have done has ever been worthwhile? Really think about that. What has ever been worthwhile that was easy? Okay? There's things that come to us naturally. Okay? And that's that's a beautiful gift and everything. We can use it. But when we really take time and put energy into that gift that was given, 
it sprouts more fruit. But the things that were not given that we had to work for, earn, and build within ourselves, those, and when we got the, 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 the benefits of those things when it came to fruition, those were the most rewarding things in our life. No different than this truth. Learning where these precepts are and lining them up, that is one of the most rewarding things ever. Having a precept ready at the tip of your tongue when you need it, or if you can't find it, you search and search, and you do find it, it's like the greatest joy that we can get in this thing, okay? And the most high throws bones, and he, you know, he looks out for you, but but just understand, all that pairs in, compa uh, in comparison to what the Heavenly Father has in store for us. So all of this hard, and it's not easy, and all of that's going on, just rest in your mind and know that if you stay upon this difficult, hard road, being chastised, being punished, being kicked, being all partakers of sufferings and all of that, whether it be shipwrecks and, and, and all the things listed in, in, in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, that would be on the bottom and defamed and all these other things and without certain dwelling place and all of that, it'll all be turned around when the blessing of the Heavenly Father comes. When he, when, when, when he sends his son, your house shy back, and you, you want to begin to have doubt, but you can't. Because your expectation and your hope put you in position with all the works and your faith to do the things and starting in the times now that will prevail you in that, in that latter time. Okay? It'll all be worth it. And you'll be over blessed with uh, more than your, your imagination can even conceive. Okay? So Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson, man. I, I needed it for myself. I just kind of... I, I, Keep it within reason, but this is what it is, man. Lord willing, this was edifying, giving all praise and glory unto you. How about Shem Yahushai, Bashim, Harakakwadash, double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, who are beautiful and excellent examples uh, unto men on how to walk in this in this faith and this truth. Okay, the, the, down the path of righteousness, they're they're leading their own direct path, but but paving the way in the direction of righteousness. Okay. That we all must do for the men that that are coming up after us. All right. So with that, um, the, uh, also I want to say um, much love, peace, and blessings unto the to the elect. Shalom. Until the next one.